please. Can you help us? Thank you. While we set up. In 2019, by God through his servant, Pastor Philip Olubaki, the Supernatural Life Church has transformed numerous lives across the city of Abuja and beyond the continent of Africa. With a vision to raise a people who are touched by God's love, transformed by his word, and empowered by his spirit to influence the world for God, we have organized various programs and put together structures that impacts different areas of life. From relationship, business and career, spiritual growth, outreaches, scholarships, catering for our growing online community, and constantly seeking avenues to help people experience the love of Christ in different ways. Some of the programs hosted include Uncensored, Love and Money, Faith Seminal, Wind of the Spirit, Shift, Welfare Outreach, and many more. Over the years, God has raised an army of ardent givers who support every initiative geared towards leading men and women everywhere into a personal relationship with Jesus. We have recorded numerous testimonies of how these initiatives are changing and impacting lives positively and want to reach even more people. All we have achieved could never be possible without our amazing partners. We love and appreciate you for all that you do. Want to be part of what God is doing through the Supernatural Life Church in this time and season? We invite you to partner with us as we embark on more projects and programs and continue to build sustainable structures that will touch many lives for Christ. We celebrate you as you partner with us today. God bless you. Put your hands together. Come on, somebody. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. So I'd like to encourage you to help me to um, welcome some of our panelists that will be helping us inspire you this morning. With me today is Mr. Akin Rumi Akindola. Please put your hands together for him. Come on. That one is for me. Put your hands together for Mr. Akin. Help me welcome Doreen Olawale. Go ahead and put your hands together for her. Help me welcome Baba Yomi Olanion. Come on. That one is for me. Put your hands together for Yomi. Go ahead. Help me welcome Mercy Idoko. You can do better than that, somebody. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here to inspire you. We're here to inspire you. There's so much that is going on in the Supernatural Life Church, and there's so much that you can do as a Christian. The theme of our talk show is inspiring, raising the next generation of kingdom financiers. Go ahead and put your hands together. Yeah, that's you. Put your hands together if that's you. Go ahead. Hallelujah. First of all, I'd like to thank our lead pastors, Pastor Philip and Pastor Fumi Olubekin, for all that they do for us and for answering the call to push God's work forward. Hallelujah. I also want to celebrate everyone, celebrate all the partners, all the workers, for putting in such an amazing work to push the vision of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'd like to first of all read from Psalm 67, verse 2. I'd like to read from the TLB. It says, Psalm 67, from verse 1 to 4. It says, O God, in mercy, bless us. Let your face be with us with joy as you look down on us. Verse 2, very important. It says, Send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all mankind. How everyone through the earth will praise the Lord. How glad the nations will be, singing for joy, because you are their king and will give true justice to their people. Hallelujah. This is our prayer that God through us will send us around the world with the news 
of his saving power. Say as one man. Come on, say as one man. I will send the news of God's saving power around the world. Say as one man. I will send the news of God's saving power around the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll be asking some of our panelists some questions and I want to believe that their answers will inspire you to, you know, look at areas that you can champion for God. Hallelujah. Please put your hands once again for Mr. King. Please, sir. Who is an SLC partner? Okay, thank you so much. Um, an SLC partner is that person who um, committedly and consistently invests his resources, uh, particularly financial resources, in God's work through SLC. Um, so that, that's who um, an ideal SLC partner is. The key word there is committed and consistent. Praise God. Please put your hands together for him. So an SLC partner is one who is consistent and committing to propagating the gospel of God. All right, I'd like um, Mrs. Doreen Olaroli to help us. The scripture um, admonishes us to part pattern our giving after God's word. Tell us how a Christian can go about this in the light of scriptures. Praise God, church. Praise God. So I'll be talking from First Corinthians chapter three, verse chapter thirteen, verse three. It says that if I give all that I have to the poor, if I give my body to people, if I give all that I have, like all that I have within my reach to people or to the poor, but I do not have love in my heart, then that giving is wasted, just like Jesus, just like God did in Matthew. Bible says that, um, in John 3, 16, Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave. So when you are giving, first of all, ensure that your giving is rooted in love. Ensure that you are giving from a place of love. God loves you, so he gave his son. So when you are giving back to God, ensure that it is because you love him. Also, um, I would like to, to read from... 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. The Bible says, Amplified Version, it says, Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his giving. Now, that scripture teaches that giving is a personal thing. When you give, you give willingly. You give with joy from your heart. When you're giving willingly, if you're doing something willingly, you decide how often you want to do it. Now, if you earn monthly, you decide that from my monthly salary, I want to give so, so, so percent towards the gospel. The aim is that you um, empower the gospel so that it can spread round and fast. So first, you decide that this is the amount I want to give and this is how often I want to give. If you're a business person, you can decide that I earn weekly and this is the amount, this is the percentage of my profit that I'll give towards the gospel. That is what the Bible teaches. Please put your hands together for Mrs. Doyle. Come on, you can do better than that. My next question is directed at Mr. Yemi. Maybe you've done a, um, quite a number of outreaches, which, you know, quite a number of us have been part of. And you've shown us that, you know, the gospel is beyond the falls of the church, that we can see a need and meet that need. I want to ask you, you know, what inspires you? Why do you do what you do? Okay, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not hearing. Praise the Lord. That sounds like it. Uh, so, my outreaches um, come from uh, deep thinking and my outreaches come from deep thinking and God. Um, so, I could be sitting down somewhere and an idea just drops. So, I'll give an example. The last outreach which we did was for street cleaners in Abuja. Um, I got the idea sometime in March. I think I was, we just finished um, the old people's home outreach. And I got the idea that, okay, these street cleaners, what if someone just walks up to them and gives them money, and gives them food. And that's the idea, idea came. So from March, I started, I started, I just kept it, and, and 
sometime last this month, and I just said, okay, let's put this up. And someone in this church walked up to me and said, Yemi, God said I should give you money for your outreach. And I said, ah, outreach that not finished planning. And he gave me money, and then we started planning it, and we went ahead to do it. So the inspiration is, I am yielded to God to help people. It's in my heart to want to help people, to give people, either publicly or privately. So once you are yielded to God, the inspiration will naturally come, and you see the need. Now if you read um, the book of Proverbs 19, verse 17, it says, if you help the poor, you are lending to, to the Lord, and he will repay you. Now imagine you lending to a God that has a, 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 thousand, a, a, a cat on a thousand hills. You are lending to a father that can repay you 10 times or 100 times more than what you have or more than what you can even imagine. So it's important that you open your heart up. God will drop something in your heart to help somebody. It might not be so big. It might be the person beside you. It might be your neighbor. It might be your cleaner. So once you see people, so my, my motto is see a need and meet a need. So I can see something that is wrong. And what just comes to my head is, Yemi, solve this problem. That's it. Thank you very much. Please put this together for Yemi. You know, Yemi has inspired me personally to see a need and meet the need. And Pastor has taught us that... You know, there's so many ways you can give. You can give to your parents. You can give to the poor. You give towards God's work. And, you know, Yemi has inspired us in several, in, you know, through his outreaches to see a need. As a Christian, no matter your level, you can always do something to help someone out there. And this is you partnering with God. Please put your hands together for Yemi once again. Hallelujah. All right, mercy. Why would anyone be inspired to become, you know, an SLC partner or to even partner with God in propagating the gospel? Praise God. Um, for me, why you should want to become an SLC partner is it is beyond. God says we should go and take the gospel to all men. The things that we see in church today, at least that's what inspires me. There's light. I know that they buy diesel. I know that there's transportation for people to come to church. And I'm like, if I can give to that, why wouldn't I? Because one person, one person alone would not do the work. God created us. God made us men so that we can do the work of God for him. But if you now say, oh, okay, I'm just coming to church. And when I come to this church, there's AC. Someone pays for that. It's being paid for. So why wouldn't I be inspired to partner? Secondly, the grace of God. So I wrote out something yesterday. When you give to God or when you give to a ministry, you're not only blessing the people that you're being touched by the ministry, but you start a supernatural flow in your finances. You're not giving because you want a, okay, so I'm giving to the, to the church. I'm not doing it for the church alone. I'm also doing it for myself. Whether you like it or not, giving to the church is starting a supernatural flow in your finances. That's just how it is. From 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are fellow workmen, joint promoters, laborers together, with and for God. You are God's garden and vineyard and the field under cultivation. You are God's building. So if I'm a fellow workman with God, God is doing a work. If I'm saying I'm a fellow workman with my pastor and God is my... For, as I'm doing for God, God is doing it in my life. It's a... I'm doing it for God and God is doing it in my life because he said I am God's building. So as I'm building God's house, God is building me. You should be inspired to partner because of all the things you see. Just knowing that, okay, you're propagating the gospel. Somebody can, comes to church because of you. That makes me feel better every Sunday. When I come to church, I'm like, I'm partnering with God, and this is happening. Amen? Please put your hands together for mercy. Hallelujah. So someone is blessed because you're partnering. More people can be touched for the gospel because you are partnering. You're committing something to the gospel. Hallelujah. All right, I just want to start with you again before we... Mercy, please. Can, can Mercy get the mic? Thank you. So just to add to what you said, what's God's promise? What's God's promise to someone who is giving? What's, what's God's promise to a believer who is partnering with him? So, what's the conviction? For me, the conviction is my God will provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. But then again, I had to go a step further. I started reading that scripture from verse 15. Please, if you can open with me to the book of 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version because it makes it, it makes it a lot clearer. It gave me better understanding. So, verse 15 says, And you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left for Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my need, not only once but a second time. Not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I seek and am eager for the fruit which increases your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating in your account. But I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent me, their fragrant order and an offering and sacrifice which welcomes. And my God will liberally supply Feel to the full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So a lot of us just go to, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. If you start from verse 15, you can see that he said, the Philippians are the only people that opened an account to propagate the gospel. So because they opened the account, he now prayed for them that God will supply their needs. That's God's promise to me as a partner. That if I partner with him, he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for mercy. Powerful. I think I've caught something. Don't leave me there, please. Hallelujah. All right, Mr. Yemi, what's the purpose of a Christian's prosperity? Because, you see, people are going to rise. People are going to rise. God is going to bless people immensely. So what's the purpose of the prosperity? Why is God blessing you? Thank you very much. Um, God is blessing you so that you can be a blessing. Now, it's going to be wrong for you to, so, example, I mean, assuming you have a dog or a cat, and you start feeding that dog, the dog is growing, but the dog is not fulfilling the purpose for which you are feeding it. Either you are, you are, you are keeping it as a security dog, or to take care of your things, or to be a, a pet to you. Once that dog is no longer fulfilling that purpose to which you want that dog to fulfill, you, you, you feel a certain way. You are no longer, you're no longer pleased. Now, as a Christian, it is important that your prosperity is to propagate the gospel of Christ. It is important that your, that your, that your prosperity is to propagate the gospel of Christ. Now, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9a, and I'll read this quickly. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth. So it is honor. Once you have that wealth, once you have that prosperity, it is important that you honor the Lord honor the Lord. Pastor Philip says it all the time. Honor. Honor. It is very important. Lastly, I'm going to be reading the book of 2nd 9, um, verse 6 to 8. 2nd um, part, it says, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Now, so if, are you looking for God's love in your life? Are you looking for God's love in your finance? Are you looking for God's love in your career? Wherever it is that you need God's love, you need to give cheerfully. That is where the, when your prosperity comes, give to God cheerfully. Um, William says that give, give, give above your level. So wherever it is, you have 1,000 naira, you want to be giving to God every month, give it. You have 500 naira, give it. 2,000 naira, give it. Make sure you are giving because that is the idea of God's prosperity for you, that as you are prosperous, that the work of God becomes prosperous. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for hear me. You can do better than that. All right. Please give the mic to Mr. King. Just, can you add something to what Yemi just said? Just a point or two. Okay. Um, so giving is number one, an altar. Um, and wherever you raise an altar, fire will spread. And that's very important. So if you raise an altar somewhere, um, it's, you are not limiting it to yourself. Other people can catch that fire. Uh, when I started um, partnership, I, I, I called my wife along and I said, um, let's do this. We thought about it. And there's so much to say, but time will not permit. Um, the, the, the most, and that's why I said in my definition that um, 
your, your heart has to be there. Where the heart of a man is, the treasure is, is there also. So the treasure was in us. God laid it in our heart. Um, we've also known, you know, and learned by experience that giving opens a lot of doors and it's a channel of blessing. So we, we purpose in our heart that we're going to give. Um, and then it was very, it wasn't easy initially because um, we didn't have that much resources. But you see, just like that widow's mite, we started contributing, I, can't even, I think it was 10,000 naira each um, for Mamiga salary. And um, as God would help us, we tried as much as possible to be consistent with it. And God, God has blessed us um, so much that I can't begin to talk about. So it is an altar for me personally first. Right? That's what I call seed faith. Right? And then secondly, um, you see, there, there's a scripture that says that when, once I, I can't remember whether it's Peter or Paul that said that, once I sense the grace of the Lord that is upon my life, they cannot but extend their hands in fellowship of me in doing the work of ministry. And so, well, this is, I came into the church and I saw the grace upon the house. It was, it was very thick. I mean, the first day I came in, I said, no, this is a place to sow in. This is a place to sow in. So I took that scripture and swallowed it hook, line, and sinker that once you get a place that is very fertile, you as a very, smart fat, uh, as a very smart farmer, you know that this is the right place to sow in. So that was very instructive for me, and um, we've yielded so much fruit from that. I don't want to take so much of time, but there's so much to say that time will not permit. Thank you. Please put your hands together for Mr. Akin. Go ahead. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. All right. Finally, um, Mrs. Doyne, you've, you've done quite a number of outreaches as well, you know, and we've been inspired just seeing you reach out to a lot of people. What inspires you to okay. do what you do? Okay. Um, it starts from the fact that we, are, we all grew in different families, and we had different privileges. So I grew up in a family where my own parents could afford my basic and my developmental needs. There are many other people, thousands and millions other people whose parents cannot afford their food and then they have to go out to source for these basic things. Now, these people, there's a percentage of these people that are not saved. At Matthew chapter 14, when Jesus Christ gathered 5,000 people to himself, before he started teaching them the gospel, because the aim of giving is winning souls. The aim of giving is ensuring that the kingdom of God is thriving here. You can clap. Earth. Come on. So, <laughs> thank you. So, I thought of it like, if there are people who are in need, and if Jesus gathered 5,000 people to himself, and before he taught them, the first thing he did was to provide food for them. That way he could have their audience, he would have their ears. So why not take food into the villages? Why not take food to the suburbs where people have not really heard about Jesus Christ? You'll be amazed at how close these villages can be to Abuja, like to the city center. The other time in December, we went two hours into Guagualada. Like from Guagualada, we drove two hours into Guagualada. These people are Abuja people. And they had, like, they were very poor. Now, there are missionaries on those fields that are trying to preach the gospel. I cannot speak Aosa, and I cannot go directly to these people because of maybe fear. But I can provide a hundred bags filled with foodstuffs to empower the missionaries. These missionaries will give them the foodstuff and they will be able to tell them about Christ. Now, the sole aim of my giving is to ensure that the gospel spreads as fast as possible. And this is what gives me a sense of fulfillment. Hallelujah. All right, finally, our time is up. Um, doing just to add to what you said. SLC is looking to reach as many families as possible on a weekly basis through you know, our welfare program. Can you enlighten us on the plans and how anyone here can benefit and also be a part of it? Okay, so SLC is starting a new project. It's called Project 5-2, five loaves of bread and two fishes. Please put your hands together. Amen. Project 5-2. Project 5-2. Now the aim is to meet the basic needs of church members, food needs, food needs of church members. So if you have a need during the week, you reach out to a welfare team member, you channel your need to a welfare team member 
And then when you come into church on Sunday, there will be a package waiting for you. I think that's good news. So Hallelujah. You need, please don't keep it to yourself. Talk to somebody in the welfare team. They will help you get something. Amen. So how, how can we be a part of it? Um, you can give to it, of course. You can give to it because if we are going to be getting full stops for as many people as possible, it is money we'll use to get these things. And not just money. If you have full stops to spare, if you have clothes to spare, anything you have to spare, give to it. Like uh, Mr. Kiola said the other time, when you find a fertile soil, ensure that you sow on that soil. Don't just receive from it. Ensure that you are completely part of it. Drop your seed there. So I encourage you this morning to drop something for somebody who might be sitting beside you that might be in need. You might, you might not know, but then that person might have communicated to the welfare team, and then you would have been able to meet their need. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together once again for Mrs. Doe. Hallelujah. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to share. But we're here just to inspire the next generation, the next generation that will take care of you know, several students' school fees the next generation that will put food on the table of those that need it, the next generation that will send the gospel of Jesus around the world, not just in Abuja, beyond Abuja and to the ends of the earth. We're looking at the next, we're looking at the next generation of people that would clothe the needy. So you can be a part of what God is doing in SLC by signing up with the SLC um, partnership department. I believe our forms are around and some of the members of the department have the form. So if you want to be a part of what God is doing, please pick the form or visit the partnership stand and we'll be glad to give you all the details. Please put your hands together again for my panelists as they take their seats. Hallelujah. Were you blessed?